Hello everybody. It's always a privilege to gather with you and share some few thoughts. Tuesday after Easter, I was uh, having a bite to eat with some friends. And this one fellow says, well, you must be happy now. Easter is done with, you're finished, you're free. And I thought, well, that's the way a lot of us think about Easter. Easter is Easter Sunday. It's a 24-hour period of time. We celebrate Easter and then we move on to something else. Interestingly though, the church says, hang on, Easter is more than just a 24-hour period. Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, is the ultimate basic truth of our faith that we because of the goodness of God, will live forever. And what the church is saying is, is that this is a truth that is so profound, that has such implications for us, that we can't just limit it to a 24-hour period. So, for the next six Sundays after Easter, the church will celebrate Easter and those liturgies on the weekends for the next six Sundays. Each of those Sundays, there will be reflections on the people who are involved in the resurrection, our faith, what the resurrection of Jesus really means, its implications for all of us. So, as the church has extended Easter, Jesus' resurrection for six weeks, let me just share a couple of thoughts about people who have thought about Easter, this resurrection of Jesus, in a way that maybe takes us beyond simply a 24-hour period. Now, undoubtedly, you have all heard of the 12th century abbot, Gurek of Igne. This is what Gurek wrote. He said, you and I are Easter people who believe the day has begun for which there is no sunset. Isn't that a great definition of Easter? The day for which there is no sunset. Let me share some thoughts from another person. The bishop in Saginaw, Michigan, a man by the name of Bishop Ken Otner, wonderful fellow, very much like Bishop Clark, very friendly, easygoing. Uh, sadly for us, he died a while back. Wonderful him, for him, he's home with God. But he had some thoughts about Easter that he once shared with the homilists, with the preachers of his diocese. And I, I think his thought is, is, I think it's a thought that you will be, with which you will be in total agreement. When he wrote to his preachers, he said, when you're preparing your Easter homily, keep it short. I knew you'd agree. But the reason for that is this is what he wrote. In my opinion, when we are dealing with something like the resurrection, words won't do it. It is the hardest thing to believe there is life after death. Yet, it is the most wonderful thing. And we are asking people to bet their lives on it. And it's true, isn't it? It's such a hard thing to, to really understand, to believe there's life after death, and yet it's this marvelous truth that gives us courage. Let me share a story in, in lieu of Bishop Ken Utner. It will be a short story. A short story that talks about maybe how resurrection can be a focus in our lives. There is a um, a German theologian who taught in the seminary in Germany, and he was vacationing in southwest England. 
it's an area in England where there's a lot of hiking trails, walking paths, and that sort of thing. So he was there vacationing one morning. He was out walking, and he saw a, a little guy who was flying a kite. Now, the clouds were low that day, so the clouds actually had hidden the kite from sight. So, to be playful, he went over to this little guy and said, Hey, what are you doing? The little guy said, I'm flying a kite. The priest looks around, looks up in the sky. And he says, I don't see any kite up there. How do you know you're flying a kite? The little guy said, I can feel the pull of it. Fast forward two weeks, he's back teaching in the seminary, teaching a course on the resurrection of Jesus. And some of his students are beginning to push back. How do you know Jesus? How can you be so sure Jesus has risen from the dead? And he said, because I can feel the pull of it. Jesus says, trust me, believe me. Bishop Ken Untner says, you can bet your life on it. And that little guy and that priest theologian say to all of us, just let yourself feel the pull of it. Thanks, everybody. Blessed Easter to all of you. Thanks again for watching.